Hi guys, uh, here we are on the 9th tee at Peebles Golf Club and it's a little bit windy today so just a few apologies if there's any miscommunications with the wind but today I'm going to talk about quite a quite a complex subject and that is D-plane so if you, if you, in order for us to understand D-plane we need to understand what, what D-plane does to create the correct path and face relationship so club face path and club face alignment at impact okay so what what I mean by that is basically it's a combination between the two factors that can basically produce the, the correct ball flight okay so I'll get two clubs right so I've got two two golf clubs here and basically it's the discrepancy between both of them which creates the ball to curve left and right okay so this is the first video of it or this is the second video in the last couple of years that I've done on this so bear bear with me okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to outline two objectives. So club face alignment. Let's say the club on my left hand, and club face path or club path. Sorry, with the, on the right hand side. Okay. So what generally happens is if there's a, if there's a combination. So the bigger the gap between the left hand club and the right hand club, then the more spin. Okay. So basically, what happens is because let's say we're hitting a wedge. Okay. There's no back, there's no side spin with the wedge because there's no tilt in the axis. So if I was to come down the line, okay, so what happens is because my shoulders, if I set up the golf ball, because we're quite close to the golf ball, my shoulders form a vertical line all the way down the ground, okay? The moment that we stand too far away from the golf ball, that's when basically our shoulders get tilted too much and that's where we create a lot of side spin, okay? So for us to create the correct impact or the correct club face alignment and impact we have to have the the correct face and path discrepancy throughout each shot okay so what what happens is because the, cl the club face is open and the shoulders are open so that's going to create a bigger gap a lot of guys who slice the golf ball their their paths going to the left so golf's the game opposite so the more we swing left the more the ball's going to curve to the right okay so anyway i won't go i won't go into too much detail about that just yet but the first thing i'm going to talk about is so the ball curves 90 degrees to where the, 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 the degree to which the, the D-plane is tilted, okay? So, so what I mean by that, okay, if my D, if I swing to the left, so if my path's going four degrees to the left, okay, but my face is square to the path, or my face is square to the target, sorry, then my ball will curve to the right, okay? So because the club face is aiming square, it'll start on target for a wee while, but because the added added uh, swing pass in there it's going to increase trajectory okay it's it's the same example if you're swinging to the right so the more i swing to the right the more the ball's going to curve to the left okay so it's understanding the correct face and path relationship okay so let's say airplane wings okay so for example if my airplane wings are tilted to the right then i like the way i like to see it is the ball the ball will curve in relation to in the direction that your lead shoulders point, okay? So if my lead shoulders high, then it's going to point out to the right, okay? If my lead shoulders low, then it's going to go, the path's going to go out to the left, meaning the ball's going to curve to the right, okay? So high lead shoulder, ball's going to curve left. Low lead shoulder, ball's going to curve to the right. It's just in, it's in proportion to where the swing path is, okay? So it's a combination between the face and path, as, as I've just mentioned. But for us to understand that, so airplane wings, okay? So in, in that position, so because a lot of golfers who hit the ball more accurate with, with short clubs, then they can't hit driver. The reason they can't hit driver is because D plane, D plane basically, because they are more away from the golf ball or stand far away, and there's not a lot of loft with driver, okay? So from this position, let's say that I'm hitting an 8 degree driver, okay? What happens is, if my path, so my path is going 4 degrees right of target, so my th my swing path is four degrees, traveling four degrees right off, but the face is square to the target, okay? The ball will curve more with the driver because it's got least degree of loft and there's more, the center of gravity is moved further back and anyway, I won't go into too much detail and there's more tilt in the axis which opens and closes the face in relation to the target, okay? But let's say with a wedge, the shaft's more upright, okay? Because the shaft's more upright, the club goes in a more vertical plane, okay? And for example, if I was to swing that wedge, the same angle as I just mentioned there, my path's going right, okay, but my face is, or my, my path's going four degrees right, but my face is square to the, the target, there's going to be less 
less back or less side spin with the wedge because there's obviously no tilt in the axis, okay? Because this club has loft on it, then that basically writes that basically outrights side spin, okay? Because we've got less loft, that increases, that encourages a lot more side spin. So it's important just to understand the discrepancy between that, okay? So if I was to swing out to the right, okay, the ball will curve left, okay? So because my club's path is travelling to the right, the ball will curve to the left, okay? But if I'm swinging left, then the ball basically will curve to the right, okay? So it's important to understand that concept, okay? So another thing that's going to affect D plane, okay? So basically, D plane is directional plane, so. And for us to understand, we need to play around with D-plane, so get swinging left, get swinging right. Swing left to try and fade the ball, swing right to try and draw the ball. So it's important that we change our coordinates at impact to get the golf ball to move in different directions, okay? So the second thing, so this is this is recommended to people who have a centre strike, so they make contact out the middle of the golf club, okay? But the second discrepancy I'm going to talk about is non-centre strikes, so I'm going to talk about off-centre strikes, okay? So. What happens is, if you hit it out the heel, the ball will curve to the right. The face is slightly closed at impact, okay, that pushes the ball left, but because of the gear effect, the face is open in relation to that. So the ball will spin, because the, the ball's coming off the left-hand side of the club, the ball will spin in relation to the right-hand side. It's the same if it comes at the toe, the ball will curve, the ball will op the club face will be open at impact, but because the D, because of the, it's coming at the toe, the ball will curve to the left, okay? so. What you need to understand is higher lofted clubs don't give off a lot of side spin. They don't give any side spin whatsoever, okay? But the lower lofted clubs, they do give a lot of side spin because, because it, obviously, if I was to hit a wedge, there's a more vertical line from the ground up the way. My shoulders don't move on a, an inclined or too much an inclined plane in relation to that, okay? So it's more up and down instead of on a, a circle dark, okay? If I was to stand further away from it, with a driver, then my shoulders are more inclined to move a more on a more violent plane, okay? So it's important to understand the concept of that. So D plane can be very complex, but if you understand, so it's the aeroplane wings, okay? So aeroplane wings are point left. Point left. I didn't know I changed my changed my hands, but if I was to point my aeroplane wings to the right then the ball will curve to the left, okay, it's the, it's the polar opposite, if I'm pointing my aeroplane wings to the left, the ball will curve to the opposite direction, okay, so that's why if, it's important to just play around with that, understand, understand the combination between the face and the path relationship in order to achieve what you need to achieve, okay, so thank you for watching, and if you've got any other, uh, any tips you want me to cover, then post a comment below and I'll get to you as soon as possible. I wouldn't say I'm first video I've done in 2018. It's been very cold recently, I've not really had the opportunity to do that. I've just been busy with coursework and things like that. But if you've got any other videos you want me to discuss or any other topics, comment below and like the video. Thank you.